Stick Together, the latest single from the Super Jesus and the first taste of their forthcoming album, which is out now Monday week and this afternoon on Triple J for Free Wheelin'. Their singer and songwriter, Sarah McLeod. G'day. Hey, Richard, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Good to see you again. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to be here. Third album is out in just over a week's time. How are you feeling? Um, I'm very excited. I actually just saw the final artwork today for the first time, so... Get out of here, really? Yeah, well, normally we get given it months before it comes out and... At this time, it was like, when are we getting it? Oh, maybe next week, maybe next week. And, yeah, we just got it today, so it's any, good. Any reason why you just, did you change your mind about the artwork no. through the stages? No. <laughs> ah. It just took a really long time. And you worked with an English guy? What was his name? Mark? Yeah, Mark Waterman. Mark Waterman. What's yeah. he done in the past? Um, he did Elastica and Swerve Driver ah. uh, and Ash. He's done, yeah, mostly English stuff, really. But he was great. He was such a dude. We loved him. It sounds like he, um, at first, you weren't quite sure about him when you were working with him. Yeah, I just thought um, that he was a bit crazy and not very good. I was, <laughs> I was like, okay, you're one of those sort of trashy English producers that doesn't care and just wants us to play, and however it comes out, it comes out, and they'll be, you know, riddled with attitude, but no, nothing, you know, no professionalism or style. <laughs> and I was going, oh god, I don't know if this is us. Um, and it took me a while to come around to his way of thinking. And then when I got it, I was like, all oh, right, no, no, I, I see what you're doing. He was trying to scare us into being better players basically and he sort of dragged something out of us that we didn't even know we had and was it quite early on in the process that you realized this uh no <laughs> it took a little while we'd he'd go to bed and we'd be out on the porch going guys <laughs> hey, do you notice what's going on here do you yeah. think he's got any idea uh, this is all going wrong I, i'm gonna have to do something and i just approached him one day and i said oh man i i just i think you've got no attention to detail and, and <laughs> i think it's it's all going wrong and i you know, we're just on different planes and we've got to sort this out quick because this is really important. And he said to me, just give me the benefit of the doubt. Give me one day where you do, um, you know, listen to my suggestions and then do as I say and see what happens at the end of the day and see if you like it. And I was like, oh, OK. Oh, boy. And so I was like, you know, here we go, uh, expecting it to be terrible. And he would go, OK, now we're going to do this. And he had these crazy ideas, like let's um, detune the drums so much that they're just... The skins are just flapping around. Oh, There's fantastic. No tension whatsoever. Yeah. And let's just put up a couple of these little plastic mics that I found in a kid's shop and chuck one in the piano. Like, it was just crazy stuff. And I was like, uh, okay. Yeah. And, and then at the end of the day, we just we actually did stick together that day. And we played it back and I sang it all in one day. We did all the guitars because the drums were already done. Um, and then we sort of gave it a rough mix. I put all the harmonies on. We sat back and listened to it and we're like, it's great. Okay, all right, you're crazy. Yeah, um, you're it's, a nutter. It's a bit unorthodox, but we're with you. And from then on, um, we had this great relationship, and I ended up loving him in the end. I think it's because I hated him so much at the start. Yeah. It took me a while to come around to him that my relationship with him became really strong in the end. And now I speak to him, like, every second day. It's really good. <laughs> That's amazing. It must feel really... You must feel v very vulnerable, especially early on in the making of an album. If you don't think the person's going to do a decent job, you must yeah. get very insecure. Yeah, and... Like, I like the idea of finding a guy that you like and using him all the time. You know, like the Beatles had George Martin. They knew that, OK, cool, we're going to get George, we're going to go in, we're going to cut a record and it's going to be ace. Yeah. You just know. And we always get these random dudes coming in and we don't know them. And, like, hi, you know, and you shake their hand and everyone's looking around and, like, nudging each other. <laughs> what are he's going to be like? And, uh, so it's do you really reckon scary. you'll use Mark again down the track? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, well, this could be the start of a good relationship. So, yeah. Rock Music is the title of the album from the Super Jesus. I want to pose a few more questions because I know sort of Tim Henwood left, you know, in the sort of early stages, I guess, of preparing for this album, and that must have sort of taken the wind out of your sails. But we'll talk about stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll open that can of worms a bit later, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> okay. Well, he went off and did the androids. Mm. It was just so bizarre, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, I just I couldn't get over it either because I've been following sort of Tim's musical career since Plasticine and then when he joined up with you guys and then the Androids. It just seemed very odd, but we'll talk about that to come. <laughs> Sarah from the Super Jesus is with us for Free Wheel and on Triple J. Let's hear the first track that you've selected this afternoon and we'll talk some more in just a moment. I still love that song to death as well. PJ Harvey. It's great, isn't it? Sheila and the Gig. It's yeah, such it's a rocky song. song. Yeah. yeah, totally. And PJ Harvey's voice, it's like she's not screaming, she's not trying to be full on um but she's just she opens up her larynx and just this really deep rich notes come out and they're all gravelly yeah and it's just cool like she's not trying to do it but in terms of being a singer i wanted to ask you because i i knew about the formation of the super jesus and you were called hell's kitchen you're on the adelaide scene but i don't know much about you know your musical development before that when did you know you were going to be a singer um i didn't really i mean i used to sing all the time when i was young and 
but um, my sister Leah used to have friends over and I would always sing to Leah's friends like because my friends were used to me singing so they didn't care but Leah used to get all cranky with me like you just stop it my friends don't want to hear you bloody singing <laughs> and the friends would be going I oh, can't sing, sing for us and I used to sing them what were you Beatles. singing just Beatles, Beatles songs, songs yeah. right yeah right. and <laughs> just really bad Beatles songs but um yeah Leah used to get all narky with me it was funny but I, I never thought of doing it as a profession I was always just I, you know, I wasn't in that scene. I went to a school in Adelaide, which was like a all girls school, and they sort of encourage you to be, you know, in the business side. Or you know, I wanted to be a stockbroker for a while, so I thought, okay, that just seems like it could be, you know, relatively exciting given the options that I only thought I had. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then I, I started playing a little bit of guitar when I left school. I would have been like sixteen. Um, I sort of knew a few chords and I went, this is actually a pretty funny story, I, if you, do you mind me telling it? it no, go, go, for it. go for it. Okay, I went to, um, just finished school, I went to Bali with some friends and it was me and three of my girlfriends and we stayed at this bed like um, 18 to 35s, <laughs> you know, trouble thing yeah. and um, there was a fashion parade on and there was a Balinese band on like in the, in the club that we stayed at and they were trying to get people to go on the fashion parade and all my friends were going, oh, let's go in it, let's go in it. And I was like, yeah, go on, go on, girls, go in it. I'm not bloody going in it, but you can. And they're like, we'll go in it if you get up and play with the band. Oh, no. And I was like, no way, I'm not playing with the band. I'd never played, you know, on stage before. I mean, I used to play guitar at home. Like, my friends would come for parties and I'd sing to them and stuff. Um, but, uh, and I was like, no, no way. And then, I don't know what happened. They must have said something to someone and before I knew it, the guy on stage, the singer, goes, <laughs> OK, we have special guest tonight, <laughs> Salah. And I was like, oh, my God, they're referring to me. And everyone was looking at me and I was like, OK. Um, and I went up there and the guy, I don't know if they knew I played guitar or not, but the guy, there was this Balinese guy standing there with a the guitar around him. And I walked up and I went, hey, mate, can I have your guitar? And he was like, oh, uh, OK. And he sort of pulled it off because they had a, a stand with sheet music in front of them with mm. all the songs that they were playing with all the chords written above it. So I could just start playing with them. It oh, didn't matter. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I didn't really know what I was doing. And I, I was like, do do do. And I found all these Guns N' Roses songs because I was a full Guns N' Roses fan at the time. I was like, you beauty. And I'm like, okay, everyone, sweet child of mine, <laughs> goes like this. And watch me for the changes and try and keep up. <laughs> and I just loved it. And they would give me all these free San Miguel. And I was like, getting free beer. Everyone's screaming at me. It was, it was ace. And I played all night long. Mm. <laughs> Here's another one. I just kept going and going. And then, um, I finally got off and then the next night I was in the crowd and they saw me again they're like, hey, Sala! And up I went and I played with them every night and then they're like, you know, hey, tomorrow night we're playing um, at the this Bull and Bear Club down the street. You know, we start at eight. Please come down, see you there. No worries. Unbelievable. <laughs> I was like touring with this Balinese band. What were your friends doing? What were they thinking? Oh, they loved it. Yeah. They loved it because suddenly I was just like, you know, I was the happening dude at the at the Tropo thing. <laughs> All of a sudden a rock star was born. What a place for it to be born in I know, too. it's hilarious, isn't it? Yeah. And I remember they, um, I had to leave on the Friday and on the Saturday they were doing this huge festival in Denpazar and it was like to like 40,000 Balinese people or something and they wanted me to go down and play. And you I was, did, I was going to say, you didn't get up on stage nah, there, did you? Nah, no, no. I was going to, I was thinking, you know, I could change my flight. And I could stay and do it. And I thought, what am I doing? What am I doing? You know, where's you were about my life to play going? the Balinese big day out. That's what <laughs> yeah. you were about to do. That's exactly what I was about to do. So from that moment on, you really weren't going to stop that feeling, were yeah, you? Yeah, no, it, you couldn't turn it off from then on. Yeah. That was the beginning for sure. How un I never it's heard funny, that story. That's a fantastic story. <laughs> Sarah from the Super Jesus is with us today on Freewheeling on Triple J.